Now, the UK could become home to the world's first power station to use a power and a in new technology. A government commission study has come out in support of plans for lagoons which can harness tidal power. The technology involves a coastal defence structure known as a breakwater with turbines that would use the rise and fall of water to create energy. The guinea pig would be Swansea Bay, where a £1.3 billion lagoon has been proposed. Despite the cost, proponents say the low-carbon method provides security as it depends on the reliability reliable ebb and flow of the tide. Well, Charles Hendry is a former energy minister and the man behind the recommendation. So, Charles, this doesn't look terribly good value for uh, taxpayers, does it? I mean, you're looking for a guarantee of 90 years for the taxpayers to pay 120 megawatts per, pounds per megawatt hour. I mean, that's even more expensive than Hinkley Point. Well, those figures are well out of date, Ian. That what I've been proposing is that we should look at the subsidy cost over the lifetime of the project. And if you do that, because a, a lagoon lasts for 120 years, you can't compare it with a project which has lasted for 30 or 60 years. And if you compare it in that way, then actually the cost is very competitive between lagoons, between nuclear and offshore wind. So it's, I think it is a, not just good for security of supply and decarbonisation and jobs, but it's also a good deal for consumers. So, sorry, to, could, how long would these guarantees from the taxpayers last, this promise to buy energy at a fixed price? Well, the, there had been a proposal for 90 years. I said that is too long, and I said that 60 years strikes me as better. So that's half the project compared to two-thirds of the lifetime of a nuclear plant or two-thirds of the lifetime of an offshore wind farm. And, but I think by doing that, it's a more realistic ambition. It doesn't have a huge amount of impact on the cost of it in terms of uh, pushing the costs up. And I think that by doing it in this way, that we end up bringing in the investment which we need and doing it in a way that is affordable to consumers. At the end of the day, Swansea, uh, as a Swansea title lagoon, would cost 30p per household per year for 30 years. That is a very small amount of money to kickstart an industry. But even 60 years, though, Charles, I mean, that's an awful long period of time. I mean, isn't it possible that the technology could get overtaken by new alternatives in that time? Oh, well, of course, there's always new technologies coming forward, but we can't make a decision now on technologies we don't yet know about. There are some which are very promising, but they haven't yet been commercialised, and therefore we have to make an assumption about what is the right decisions for this country now. So I think that one which really is good for security of supply because of the absolute predictability of the tides, something which is very good for, de for decarbonisation as one of the lowest carbon emitters of any source of power generation, which will create thousands of jobs in a new industry and can do this at an affordable rate for consumers, I think that is a good decision for the UK at this time. Of course there may be other technologies which come through in due course, but for the time being, I think actually we've got a very good opportunity which we should seize. Now you talk about the predictability of the tides, but I mean the predictability of the costs of the Swansea project are, are anything but. I mean the, the expected budget has risen from about 900 million to 1.3 billion in less than two years. Well, we've all seen as projects go through the process of being assessed and examined, then they get the costs often go up. We've seen that with nuclear power. We've seen it with so many other things. The, the government ultimately will do this negotiation. The government will say, we think this is a reasonable price to pay, and that they will then fix that uh, contract for different strike price, as it's called, uh, with the power company. But I think that this is something which is the time has come for it. We've been looking for decades at the tides and thinking, how can we harness those? There is a technology which we can use to do that. It would put the UK at the forefront of that. We would be leading this new industry. There'd be opportunities around the world which we could benefit from as well. So it's not just about energy. It's about can flood defences, it's about economic regeneration, it's an auto, a, a well-rounded package of benefits. But is the technology genuinely exportable? I mean, not every country around the world is going to be able to use tidal lagoon power. I mean, how confident are you that there's a market for this stuff out there? I'm confident that there's a reasonable market. You're absolutely right. You've got to have a good tidal range in order to be able to benefit. And we know that countries like India, France, China, uh, Korea uh, are countries where they've got great opportunities for this. Uh, now, they will do much of their own manufacturing. But a lot of the uh, service work, a lot of the environmental consenting work, a lot of the uh, project management work will be run from, from Britain because if we're the pioneers, just as we've seen with offshore wind, we're in a very strong position to then lead the world 
world in taking that technology forward. I don't think we'll see the same cost falls as we've seen in offshore wind, but we can certainly see this as a technology where the UK can win and it's good for the economy, it's good for the environment and it's good for consumers.